Hi there folks, welcome back to the Over and Andy Fishing Channel. It's Andy again and I've come out to do some spring pike fishing. Uh, IB's at work today so I'm on my own. It's a really, really pleasant day. We've just come off the back of a really wet, miserable weekend when IB and I were hoping we were going to get loads of filming done. Unfortunately it didn't happen, there's not a whole lot we can do about the weather. Now usually when I come out and film these vlogs on the gravel pits, it's super windy and super horrible but actually today, you can see behind me there, there's barely a breath of wind. It's very unusual to see this place like this. Absolutely thrilled it's not as tough as it usually is in terms of conditions. I've come to a pit today and in truth, I've tried to film a couple of vlogs on here before and found it really, really difficult. I don't know what it is. There's something about tough venues that just keeps me coming back. I should have given up on this place a while ago because over the years it hasn't really done much for me but I keep coming back for more. Is there anyone else out there like that? Do you guys get attracted to tough venues, places where you really struggle? Because the struggle's been real here. It's super clear, like tap water clear. It's probably the clearest venue I've got, uh, which I think for today will necessitate the really natural looking baits. I'm thinking like perch and pike replications and stuff like that, nice natural roach patterns. But to be honest, I've thrown it all in here before and it's never really paid off. I'm really keen on getting cracking on. I really like these conditions. I think it's totally different. Uh, spring is starting to spring. Spring is sprung, sprung is spring. You can see there's a little bit of green down there. There's actually even some lily pads started to grow up. The place looks absolutely beautiful. All we need to do now is make it look a bit better with a pike in the hands. Let's give this a go. Okay, so I've got a really nice margin down either side of me here. It looks like a good ambush point for a fish. So I'm going to start off. I'm just going to rip this jerk bait past. There's good depth. There's about two and a half foot there, which at this time of year is plenty. So I'm just going to just going to rip this jerk bait along this edge just for two minutes. Just see what happens. Oh, follow. Already. Oh, damn it. Already a follow. I wonder if I can get this back in there. Oh, it's turning looks. Come on. It's still down there. Just about still see him. Okay, one more flip with this because I don't want to risk spooking him. Let this drop right the way down this time. Came in pretty hot. I thought he was going to eat that. And then he kind of turned away on it. Come on. Okay, right, so straight away I'm going to switch to something that can fish slightly slower and a bit more naturally. Okay, so right, while I may not have caught the first fish I've seen, I'm really glad that one showed up in the margins. I've switched over to the pike shad, just so I can fish it a wee bit more slowly and it just looks a bit more imitative, a bit more natural. It's got a, a rattle in the tail as well. I'm just going just gonna to tick tock this back towards me on a straight wind. It's nice to know there's one down there early and my, my feeling about the margin was right. Oh, follow, there he is. Right, he likes that one close. Right, he's sat looking at the bait. I've not got a great view of him. I can see him clearly enough. He's about two feet behind it. And all I'm trying to do here is just small movements of that bait, just so he knows it's there, just so he thinks it's alive. Not been a particularly aggressive response to it yet. Okay, I had to bring that out because I could see it was stuck on something. Bubbles just come up where he was. And if I move it a bit more aggressively. Provoke an attack maybe. No. He's pretty dormant. Well, that first kind of 15 minutes or so is absolutely typical of this place. You know, two really tentative follows, but no eat. And really, for the last couple of years, that's been the story here. If I'd have converted half the follows I've had while I've been fishing this place into takes, it would probably be my favourite venue, but it's always these really tentative follows and little nips and plucks. I've got to find a way of converting those. And I'm going to go round behind me over here because there's a really wooded bank. Around this side is very open, but there's a heavily wooded bank down here, which I think will probably provide a bit of cover and a couple of bays that might be the kind of place we're looking for on a day like today. Let's go. OK, 
Okay, back to that jerk bait and still working around the same bait. There's some lovely structure around here, you know, felled trees and stuff like that. It feels like a pikey area. Oh, oh, come on, eat it, eat it. Oh, god damn it. Oh, there's a fish right behind it. Oh, proper flared on it as well. Oh, it's still there. It's still there. He's looking for it. You can see him looking for it. It's just gone around a circle. There it is, buddy. There it is. Eat it that time. He's right behind it. Come on. Eat it. Oh, my goodness. He's right below me. Okay, I had to stop for the moment because he's right down here at the rod tip. But he is fired up. Come on, buddy. Eat it. Oh, he took it. He's still looking for it. There it is, buddy. Jeez, he liked that retrieve. Ah. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Smashed it. Wow. Absolutely smashed it. That was so cool. Jeez, so good job. This isn't a bigger fish. I'd Probably lost him to a hook pull. It's only just hooked. It's only just hooked. Come on. Come on, get in it. Get in it. Yeah, buddy. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah, there you go. Well, if that isn't what summer jerkbait fishing is all about, I don't know what is. I mean, visual, fired up fish, fishing fast. Angry fish, this one. Really, really angry fish. Just giving me absolute hell trying to unhook him. But we got there in the end. Jeez, he's fired up. I'm going to get this one back. <laughs> he's still really angry, but interesting. I'll change the presentation a bit there. And once I've got this guy back, I'm going to talk through what I changed. Where are you, buddy? Let's see if we can get you back for a nice, easy release. There you go. So to give us some kind of perspective, that's the first fish I've had from this lake this year. And I reckon it's probably the fifth or sixth time maybe that I've actually fished it. So a real relief to actually be able to hook up on one these times. Really interesting fish and I love that visual stuff and I could see the whole thing. He came in and snapped at it once and you know, he was looking around for it, he was angry, he kept following it. I knew that fish would eat. It was just a question of whether I'd get the hook up and I was really lucky this time. I just nicked him with one of the trebles just on the front of his mouth. So really cool to get off the mark on this place for this year. Really happy with that but I think the retrieve and the things I did differently there have given me a bit of an idea about what's going on. I was fishing that with lots of twitches, but I was fishing it much slower. I was allowing the bait to pull around 90 degrees and then jerk it. So it was coming in very, very slowly, but it was broadsiding a lot. And that really fired that fish up. It was a totally different reaction to the first one earlier on today. So hopefully that means I might have gone some way to figuring this out a little bit. There's only one way to find out. I've got to get that bait back out there and keep casting. Okay, so I'm keeping moving around the lake and I've come to a little point in between two bays. And I don't know if you can see down there, but it drops off really quickly. There's a couple of bits of lay down either side of me that I definitely need to explore first. Wind started to get up and it feels like a, feels like a pretty good day for some spring piking now. And keep trying to work this bait slowly. Okay, so no interest in this deeper water for the uh, jerkster. I'm kind of not surprised about that. All the follows I've had so far have been margin fish. So I'm gonna go back to the hybrid pike. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, this, this heavier rod is giving me a bit of a headache at the moment. I'm not really sure what to use. I mean, all the interest has been on smaller baits so far. Although at the same time, I haven't fished water of this depth before. And then I'm also thinking, well, is this the right bait to fish in deeper water? Because it's not a particularly fast sinker. So I think I've got a decision made to make here. While I'm in this deeper stuff, should I change to a you know, shad with a heavy head on the front of it or something? I'll give this a go for a couple of minutes, but I don't feel like the hybrid pike's the right bait for the water I'm in right now. I've been wrong about this stuff before. So 
So it's not going to be ideal for the situation. I mean, it's, it's grossly underrated compared to the rod, but I've actually gone for a smaller river roach with a 20 gram head on it. A couple of reasons. First off, it's in, in terms of other presentations, it's about as close as I can get to what looks like the jerkster, which is which is drawn takes. The other reason I've gone for this is because with that 20 gram head on, it's going to sink really quickly and I'm going to be able to cast it. But also it means I can, you know, twitch it along the bottom a little bit and rip it and stop it. Kind of like how I'm fishing the uh, jerk bait. Right, yeah, it casts all right, actually. Just gives me a just gives me a chance to kind of imitate what I'm doing with the jerk bait, but in 15 feet of water rather than in three. Well, no fish in that last peg, but I like the theory behind that river roach, and I think that's going to stay on the heavy rod for a little while yet. But I'm starting to move around, and I've come into this gorgeous bay. Look at that! Fresh lily pads growing up. We winds blowing in here. I mean, this just looks dreamy. This looks absolutely perfect for fish. Follow. Oh, it's a good fish as well. Come on, do something with it. It is a nice fish. Do you know what I think what I'm going to do while he's still there is I'm going to back off and grab the other rod that's got the roach on it. Now, I can't see him at the moment. Okay, he's not followed that one. Well, after an unusually positive start for this place, it's gradually started to sit back into its normal position, which is really, really slow, lethargic follows from fish that don't look that interested. Uh, that last one followed a jerkbait in pretty quickly, but I never thought it was going to eat it. Just kind of ambled behind it and sat there for a couple of minutes. It never looked at the river roach. So the only thing I can think of doing really in that situation is just moving on, just keep moving. So I've come up to the next bay. I've got loads of space. That wind's got up quite nicely now. You can almost see that behind me. It's a bit blown out. And it's put a little bit of a ripple on the water. And I, you guys have heard me talk about this stuff before. I like that. I like to see that on the, on the water when I'm pike fishing. So I'm still hopeful. There's loads of time left. I've only been here just over an hour. I'm seeing fish. All I've got to do is try and convert some of these follows into takes. We could have a really good day here. Well, I'm about two hours in now and it's gone very, very quiet. I've given that I've given that end of the lake a really good going over. The, the wind's blowing in there, it looks perfect, it's nice and shallow. There were fish moving around in there. But I think I'm gonna go up to the other end. I don't usually like going to the opposite end to where the wind's going, but I haven't really got much choice at the moment because another lure angler has just rocked up and is fishing towards me. Uh, depressingly, I've just watched him catch a fish. It was only a small one, but he's had one out of there as well. So. Clearly they will take something. It, it looked like he was fishing some sort of tail bait, but I'm quite a long way away, so I can't tell. This is definitely the shallower end of the lake. I'm going to go down to the deep end of the lake and just see if there's any bigger fish or perhaps a few more fish down there. Although I'm reluctant to spend too much time down there just because I want to be on the end of that wind. I really feel confident and when I'm on the back of the wind, I don't feel like it fishes as well. I'll give it a go for 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. It's worth a change because at the moment it's not working up here. Okay, so I've made the move, like I said. It's not a move I'm massively thrilled about, but there wasn't really much more option with that other guy already going over the water that I'd fished earlier. So it's definitely calmer down here. Uh, it's definitely deeper down here, but to start with, I'm gonna stick with that jerk bait and just fish, the, just fish the margins and the edges just for a few more minutes. Got him, fish, there we go. There's one. In the margins, like we said, absolutely smashed it. Oh. Got to get him through a lot of lilies and stuff to get him back here to me. Oh, I can feel it going through some pads there. Is he still on? Still on. Right. 
it's slightly bigger fish than the first one, I reckon. He's making some fuss, that's for sure. Yeah, bigger fish than the first one. Wow, strong. Strong, strong, strong. Big one. There he goes. Right. Grab the net. Looks like he's... Looks like he's done for himself on that run there. Oh, I might have a my very wet foot in a minute. In he goes. Good stuff. There we go. So, slightly bigger fish than the first one. Definitely much stronger. Jeez. That's more like it. Beautiful fish as well. Great markings. And super healthy. Decent weight as well. It's actually quite a heavy fish. I'll give that one a quick measure on the tape. And we'll get a slip back. Jeez, I like those jerksters. Woohoo! There she goes. Ah, so cool. Boom. Off she goes. Sweet. Uh, I don't want to fish the deep end, I want to fish the shallow end, all the fish with the shallow end. Idiot. Absolute idiot, but really, really nice to get another one, particularly on the jerk bait. That fish was in about two feet of water. I actually saw the whole thing happen. It was really, really cool. That's exactly what you want at this time of year. Super strong fish that went 85 centimeters on the mat. So perfectly reasonable fish as well. And in pretty good nick given the time of year. I could easily be led to believe that that fish hasn't spawned yet because it was rock solid. It was, it was a much heavier fish than it probably looks actually. More importantly, it's the second fish. It's another fish. I'm a step closer to cracking the code and these fish are fired up. Actually, Getting that take has kind of coincided with a slight lowering of the wind and it's probably got a couple of degrees warmer now I don't know if that's made any difference or whether I've just landed that in front of a fish that was hungry but I've got to take and I've, I've got to look for any any sign I can get on this place because it's been so hard in the past. What I want to do now is try and sneak a third out because this is going much better than all the other sessions have done so far. stop there a second. Now I wasn't going to include this bit in the edit, I decided very early on that this was going straight in the bin, but actually I've decided to put it in there because it's important. A little bit of context here, so four or five times during the day I'd had it happen where I was just getting that jerk bait to a crucial area and then it wrapped around the trace. You guys have all had it happen before when you're fishing jerk baits. It just kept happening at really important times. And just this once, I lost my rag, I lost my temper a bit, and this happened. Oh, so not my proudest moment, I'm not particularly pleased with that one, but I probably got what I deserved. That was a 70 gram jerk bait hitting me at whatever speed. Uh, to be honest, I was pretty lucky that it hit me on my hip rather than in my face or around my head area, because that could have been really nasty. I've got a really good bruise today, but it could have been a lot worse. So kids, whatever you're doing, don't mess about with trebles, don't lose your concentration. There's danger everywhere doing this, so just be careful. Don't do what I just did, because that was really stupid. Well, I had a couple more chucks in the swim that I caught the first fish out of, but I've not moved anything. A couple of fish, I'm pretty pleased with that. Do you know what? It won't seem it having watched this, but for this place, that was absolutely manic. <laughs> it's been it's been so hard. I've really struggled on here, not necessarily to find fish, but just to get them to eat. So to get two good takes, you know, they both absolutely slammed it. It's a real plus one, not only for the conditions on the day, but for the bait. I mean, they, geez, they love that jerkster at the moment. They're absolutely crushing it. 
Really interesting to note that even though I kept it on for, for quite a large portion of the day, and it is very, very similar to the Jerkster in terms of size and in terms of pattern, the river roach never got a follow. Look, literally nothing. I never saw a fish anywhere near the shad, near the soft plastic. For me, most of my fishing is done with soft plastics, particularly shads, but if I'd have come with that mindset today, I don't think I'd have seen one. So really interesting there. I'm not entirely sure why. Sometimes they're just like that more aggressive presentation. And certainly today, they really wanted that jerk bait. So not an easy session, but a really rewarding session for me to finally get somewhere near cracking this place is an absolute miracle. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. If you did, please give the video a like. Please remember to sub to the channel. A little channel keeps on growing. We're, we're approaching 2000 subs now, which was totally mind blowing. We never imagined that it'd quite take off the way it has, but it, you guys keep subbing and we keep making the videos and hopefully long may that continue. So don't forget to hit the sub button, ring the little bell so you get a notification when we upload some stuff because we've got plenty more coming. And in the meantime, all I need to say is thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys again very, very soon. Cheers, folks. Bye-bye.